Guys, the new pipe is in. It looks really good. Let's take it for a test ride and see how it forms. Nine days ago, I was on the highway and my charge pipe popped. And when this goes, it's gonna happen when you're on a highway accelerating and this goes pop. Um, worst case is that this explodes in a little tiny pieces and gets sucked into your turbo and you need new turbos and possibly a new engine. Um, in my case, it just, the glued seam on this just came apart and I had no The problem I have with my pipe is that seam that goes there is a glued seam. So what happened basically in my case is this. So that's basically what happened in my car. This is literally how close I came to needing probably a new engine, new turbos. Um, this piece could have come right off when the pipe split and got sucked right into the turbo. So I was able to make it home for the July weekend and ordered the BRSF um, aluminum replacement charge pipe. I installed it and I've been driving on this with the pipe, the new pipe for about two days now and I'm very happy with the pipe. Um, the reason I'm doing this DIY is there's no instructions that come with the pipe for installation. Um, said and done, this is a really great product. It's $150. With the shipping, it took about two days from Miami to New York, where I am, and I was able to install this under an hour. Part do not go to dealership and spend over five hundred dollars getting this reinstalled in your car, and it's going to happen again because this is a cheap product. So let's get right into this DIY. Only doing this because it doesn't come with instructions, so when you look at it, it might be like a little confusing. Uh, watch this video, and you see how to do this yourself. Like I said, if you're buying this beautiful car, do not. Just replace the charge pipe right away. All right, guys, let's get this uh, pipe installed. Cotton. Now order the pipe and also order the O-ring that goes inside the pipe. Always remember to order order the O-ring that goes inside the pipe. Connectors here. The pipe itself. It's pretty solid. It comes with this rubber tube. And yes, the O-ring. Very important you order this when you order these pipes. And just the invoice. That's a close-up of the O-ring. Always remember to order this. Uh, when you order a new pipe. The clamps are very, very sturdy. It's very heavy. Kind of like that. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and install this. Install seems simple. I'm trying to figure out what to do with this extra elbow here. I'm assuming, I think it looks like it connects like that for the front end of the engine. Now to begin, I'm gonna remove the the air box, the intake, that plastic piece, and remove the air box, but I'm not gonna remove it all the way, I'm just gonna lift it out of the way so I can get in there. Uh, these are two Torx, Torx T20. Next up is two clips here, you're just gonna remove those clips. So let's use a pry tool. And this comes right off. It clips into the air box with two sort of clips. It's pretty straightforward to remove this piece. It just clips into the air box with two, um, two clips right there. The box is really easy, it's just some metal clips. One, two, three, and four. I lost the fourth clip when I was trying to tape up the old pipe. And that lifts up. 
the air filter comes right out. You could check this to see if you need that replaced. This you could just pull off. It's just connected by some pins. There. Make sure these clips don't fall out. I lost that one. It fell in there somewhere. So. So it's three of those. Um, it's anchored in with three pins. It just pops right out. It's like a rubber pin. So this is the anchor points for removing the air box. There's one here. It's just a rubber, like a rubber thing. And you can pull it up. That's how that comes up. Um, there's one back there, here. And there's another one behind there somewhere. You can't really see it, but you just pull it, it'll come right up. I'm going to use my breaker bar to brace it. Now with the airbox out of the way, I could have full access, I have full access to, to this pipe now. Um, we're going to probably start on this end, loosen that. Just to loosen this one first, this is um, a holding bracket. And I'm assuming, I don't know, well, <laughs> how this thing is really frail. It already broke there and then the seam over there busted. So I don't know, hopefully this doesn't break off into pieces when I pull that piece out. That is not even connected, that's just duct taped up. So I'm just going to cut away that duct tape and then just pull the whole thing out. That's already anchored, that anchor is already loose, but that's something you would also screw out. And there's also the, the sensor that you have to unscrew from the old pipe. So I'm going to start by moving that. So this is a Torque T25 screw, bolt. So I'm going to screw that. I'm not going to need this for the new replacement pipe. Very careful and make sure nothing falls into this engine. Because pieces may be covered in oil or what have you. So that's how that looks. Next I'm going to remove my sensor in the corner. And that's uh, Torx T20 bolts. And I'm not sure if these screws will fall in, so I'm going to be very careful and do this really slow one at a time. I'm going to loosen it and then just unscrew it with my hands. And that's what that looks like. Really tiny screw that could get lost in there. You don't want that to fall. The reason I'm removing the sensor before before removing the pipe is that I have a lot of tape on that pipe where it cracked. I'm gonna be very rough in removing it. Partly because of my anger in that BMW decides to use such cheap plastics. So I'm gonna remove the first clamp at the base there by the front of the engine bay. And this is just a basic uh, flathead screwdriver clamp. BMW uses these clamps a lot. They're actually pretty good clamps. If there's any positives inside this engine base, these clamps, they tend to be very secure. Next at the top there, it's gonna be a clip. Then I'm gonna just uh, press out. Yeah, this is very important. You don't wanna lose this because that's gonna um, anchor the new piece in. So with that clip off, this whole thing should just come right out. See my tape work there. Uh, there we go. So that part is out. I'm just trying to move this up and out of the way. Uh, that bit that I cut got me a hard time to get off. That was attached to the front end of the car. I ended up just cutting it and pulling it off. Also got the sensor off of the old pipe, the two torque screws and I'm gonna screw it onto the new pipe and then put the new pipe in there. So, so this is gonna go on like, like that. This has like a rubber seal, so it should be straightforward. And you push it in. Hey guys, the O-ring is seated on here. This step is real easy to forget, but it's very important that you remember to do this. Uh, my problem with the installation was with the sensor bolts. I did not see the new bolts that come with a new pipe, so I, I started using the reusing the old bolts to get the sensor onto the new pipe. As you see, it's a different setup. I ended up breaking one of the bolts in there. It's I can't really get it out, but I managed to get secure the sensor on there with just the one bolt, and the sensor has a, its own sealing O-ring. So it's very secure on there. I've driven 200 miles with it so far and with no issues. 
Um, so it's my fault. So let's get this installed and continue with the DIY. So here it is guys, I am done. Uh, it is installed. Uh, it got me a bit more trouble than I thought. Um, the two bolts for the um, sensor, that threw me. I didn't see the new bolts in the kit, like I said. Um, so I ended up stripping a bolt inside the um, hole, but there's only one bolt in there. Hopefully that should hold. It is totally my fault. I didn't search through the packaging when I unpacked it. Like I said, if something goes wrong, I'm just going to order this pipe again because it's such a good value. Um, it is my fault. I did recycle my alligator, my clip here. Um, remember, when you remove the old pipe, do not drop that in there. Just make sure you um, keep that. The O-ring I put in there, um, that was easy to go in. Get the pipe on there first, make sure everything's snug, and then put that clip in after. Uh, the problem is you could drop that clip in there, and that's something that's going to be a nightmare to fish out if you drop it. Uh, at first, it was a little shaky there. It kept like kind of, it wasn't like secure, but um, once I secured the elbow in, um, that part for some reason became very secure. Um, I've been dealing with the duct tape for weeks, so I know how important this joint is in being secure. This is a metal pipe. Um, so it's not going to give you a lot of flexibility with squeezing it in there, but I realize why they have this elbow, rubber elbow. It gives you, makes the installation easy. My only complaint with this kit, it doesn't come with any installation instructions at all. So you have to figure out how to do it yourself. And the only video I saw on YouTube, there's a couple of guys in the garage. I'm not even going to link them below because it's such an idiotic video where it's five or six guys in a garage and in the middle of the video they're trying to show you how to install this. A guy comes in selling something off his cell phone. It's just weird. But in that video, I'm assuming a lot of people might follow that video. They do not install these um, anchor clips here. Um, based on my experience with the duct tape and my experience with installation this, installing this, I think these are very important that you guys install these anchor um, O-rings. Um, uh, securing o-rings is very important you install that simply because this is a different material than that that's the aluminum that's a rubber and what the bmw actually has on the other side of that is a combination of rubber and metal i'm not sure what's in there but um, um these bolts are 10 millimeter hex nuts you just tighten them as you go make sure you tighten them over the piece that the rubber elbow is going over so as you can see that this metal pipe ends there so it's tightened on the metal pipe not on the rubber. Is that, I know it sounds silly, but it's easy to make that mistake. Um, these bolts are very slippery. They almost fell in the engine bay a couple of times, and I realized the N55 engine bay is a nightmare to get stuff out once you drop stuff in there. <laughs> so that's that. I'm gonna go start the car and see what's going on. Hopefully my chink engine light is not on anymore. So this is the moment of truth. Um, air box is back in. That's fine that that's open. That's all air coming from in the front anyway. So I'm not going to put that back just yet. I want to make sure everything is secure in here. Now, my only concern is the there is a bit of play, but everything seems secure. Um, yeah, so, and this hose is really squishy. It's a lot more squishy than I thought it, it'd be, but um, making sure everything's secure. I'm going to go start the car. Before I had the check engine light, you guys saw when I when I was duct taping the pipe up last weekend. So let's start her up. It's really hot today. It's like 90 degrees. You'll know right away if this is working. So my service engine light is there. I'm gonna put my foot in the gas and start her up. The service engine light went away. Car starting okay. There's a bit of surge there. I don't know what that is, but there's no check engine light. That's good. So it looks good. Um, there's a spider in my <laughs> There's a big spider right there. So everything looks good, guys. I'm going to seal this up and drive it, see how it holds up. I drove about a mile up the road. It's driving really good. Um, it feels almost like the car has slightly more performance like accelerating uh, yeah there's more feedback like when you hit that gas pedal you, there's quicker feedback in acceleration it could be all in my mind because seeing that metal pipe in there um, but I read through all the reviews there are hundreds of reviews on this pipe and I think a lot of people were saying the car that engine had more performance after installing the pipe now we have a bit of um 
bit of freedom. So I'm gonna just try to push it a little bit. I'm not gonna go too fast. But yeah, there's definitely, I do feel it. Like I said, it could be all in my mind, but I'm definitely feeling the performance increase slightly. Not like a Bugatti, but I feel it's like a cleaner, if lack of a better word, a cleaner kind of acceleration. One of the things that will affect your car's performance with the charge pipe is going uphill. So I'm going uphill. You guys could hear. Yeah, it's clean. Even with the duct tape, I couldn't have done this. It was still stuttering a little bit um, going uphill. And that's the thing I love about BMWs. There's such great feedback in these cars, but they put crappy parts in them. Like I said, I could feel <clears throat> I could feel the engine, I could feel what the engine is doing and I love that about these cars since I had the 318, my four cylinder and I've driven, we've had, my wife has leased Mercedes and different types of cars, I've never felt that in another car. But this I could feel like a little pipe, little hole in the pipe and I replaced the pipe with a metal pipe, I feel a difference, it might be mental but I definitely feel it and the car is a joy to drive again and that's so I'm glad that installation went well even though I did mess up the screw in a new pipe when you guys get your new pipe make sure you use the screw there's two little bolts it's a weird hex bolt do not reuse the screws from your old uh, charge pipe guys alright that's it guys uh, I'll see you guys in the next one bye